last week, Carl Lentz, the pastor of Hillsong, a church that I actually associate myself with, um, came out and he, um, he actually got let go from his position as the head pastor at Hillsong, New York. Um, and then the following day, he released a statement of the reason why he was released, and that was because he cheated on his wife. And that is unfortunate. Um, it's an unfortunate mistake uh, that he made. But it, it's just one of those things that when you're in a position to lead millions and, and people are attached to you, like the headlines say Justin Bieber's pastor. It's like, fam, he's not even Justin Bieber's pastor. But because he's associated with these people, like they put him in this position where multiple people now follow him and look to him. And now I just saw him cheat on his wife. And now the church doesn't even know what to do. I saw that countdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, like, cheating is never a good thing. Cheating in a relationship is never a good thing. It's a horrible thing. One of the worst things you can do. Horrible, horrible thing. Um, however, like in regular life, you don't lose your job because you cheated on your wife. Like, you don't lose right. at the bus, at, with the MTA or at, in HR because you cheated on your wife. And, yeah. um, and this is why, you know, people and religion is always really confusing because it's forgive, forgive, forgive. Um, you know, a church is a place for sinners. Um, mm -hmm. then you fuck up and you're excommunicated or you're fired or you lose your job. See, so really giving the message that all are welcome. It's like, you're welcome if you are perfect. You're welcome if you've never made a mistake. You're welcome if, you know, when most people that are in church are, are looking for redemption and looking for some type of faith and encouragement to go out there and live a good life. Um, you know, this is, I, I love this. I love this topic. I love what you just, we were just talking about because yeah, that's what the church harps on. Like, you know, like, come in as you are and we accept everyone. And I think this is a very interesting situation that we have now because I do agree that he should be let go um, from his position as the head pastor. I, I do f feel like to be a pastor of a church, you need to live a life and um, you know that calling going into it. Mm -hmm. It's not saying that you're, you're exempt from mistakes, but a mistake of this magnitude, um, it's a moral action. So it doesn't really make you fit to lead other people who struggle with the same thing, right? So I do agree with him being terminated, but like what I wanna see is how the church responds to him. And I also wanna see how he responds to this. Like, because if you lose your position and your title, do you not come to church anymore? I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's essentially what it is. And that's why- it's No, because, because that's, it's like- That's not what it should be, but that's what it's going to be. You don't go back to fired from. You don't do that. I worked, at a, I worked at a retail place. Don't work there anymore. I still shop, but I'm not going to go to the exact store I used to work at. You might. Everybody's like, hey, Trav, get to see you. You might. I'm not going to do that. No, it's too far. <laughs> too far. And it's just like a, it's like a shame thing. Like, even if you shouldn't feel ashamed, like, it's like a shame thing. And then if he goes back to church, he knows exactly what people are talking about. He knows exactly what people are questioning. But you got to kind of compass and it's one thing if they look at him and they say hey listen like you're in a position where people look up to you man and morally you you screwed up you fucked up listen like we're going to take away this position from you but we're here for you like come come as you are come to church like come to counseling like you and your wife if you want to work it out come to counseling we'll t i'll talk to you and we'll work this out i guess from the senior pastor that uh that let him go but that's not what right. it, oh. so that's why i'm not cool with it if it was that, I'm cool with it. But that's not what it is. It's peace out, nigga, peace out. You cheated on your wife? No, it's not. It's, I don't think it's that. I get, I get your point on you don't show up to the job that you got let go of. But it's so different when it comes to church, right? Because like, I think the ultimate test is based on church. The ultimate test is like you don't really run away from this. You kind of face it. You kind of embrace it. But like... We know that that's not a perfect world. No. Is he being allowed to face it? Is he being allowed to embrace it? Is he being allowed to be imperfect? Is he being allowed to be vulnerable? That's the test. I don't think that he, is the test. I just think he got his walking papers and they said, we'll see you when we see you. That's it. Like, I, 
listen, I, if it was, if it was what you said, if it was so like ideal where they just looked at him and looked at his role in his position and thought you are not morally fit to lead. Cool. Dope happens to coaches all the time happens to all kinds of people who, right. that have to lead and have to like, you know, uh, be in a certain type of example. Shit. Our president, horrible example of a man like is not fit to lead, but nah. if that is a church and wants to live up to being Christ-like, um, I, I, I can't, I can't roll. I can't roll. I grew up in church, was in church every single Sunday as an adolescent and a teenager and have a great reverence for it. I believe in God. I, I like, I love all of that. Right. Right. People aren't perfect and people run. No, that's fine. So what's your stance? You think that what you think that he shouldn't have been let go? Uh, I, I do think he should have been like stepped down from that role. Right. Uh, whatever like his, 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 his like really like front facing role was because like I said, either coach, priest, pastor, whatever, like you need to be an example to the people that you lead. And if, you're, sure. if you fall short, then you don't need to be in that position. But if it's, if it's a church and you fall short, like we're supposed to lift each other up, right? Especially in church. No, absolutely. I, I, I think this is the biggest test. I agree with you. This, is the, this to me is a huge test on just the church, right? Like how do you accept someone when they make a mistake? It should be, it shouldn't be even like a question. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be a question. It shouldn't be hard. But like, this is the test though. Like, like, do you, does the church actually practice what the church preaches? Oh no, absolutely. Right? I know. And, and we will, and we'll see, we, we shall see. I think another question I had for you was Christian wife, right? Uh-huh. Forgive your husband. Right. Take him back. If you trust them. I mean, listen, we can go. Life is life, right? Like we can go right. a certain set of rules or commandments or Bible verses, but ultimately you got to be able to look yourself in the mirror and be comfortable with the things you're doing every day. And if you right. meet somebody, you got to be comfortable that you trust that person to only be with you and be faithful. And if right. you divorce them. Yeah, that has to be traumatizing. I feel like as a, as a pastor's wife, you believe it's light. It's okay. It's cool. Like there's no chance. Well, they put better chance than most. They put their they get cheated on, huh? They, they put their faith over their pride. Yeah, it's not about if you, it's not about if they feel good. It's about how's my family. It's about how's this church family. It's about how's my kids. It's about you know my yeah. still needs to be this pillar in the community. This is tough. I watched uh, the Housewives of Potomac, and you know who watches it, so you know why I watch it. Um, and there yeah, yeah, way to, way to, way to carry that on before I came for your neck. <laughs> did. Absolutely. I mean, you know why it's on my television, you know, why I'm watching it. Um, there is a, a lady on there. Her name is Giselle and her ex-husband is pastor Jamal Bryant. He's like a big time pastor in Atlanta and down South, but he has a bunch of outside kids. He's, you know, cheated on her multiple times and she decided to divorce him. And now they're together again, uh, trying to make it work, trying to make a new relationship work because, you know, she loves him and wants to be with him. But I feel like that decision to, to leave him the first time was because she felt like she couldn't trust him and felt like, you know, he betrayed her and their marriage and their union. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with leaving a nigga that. That's a fact. Regardless of their position, regardless if they're a priest or a pastor or whoever, like you got to live with yourself. Choose you first. Abs ab abs of fucking lootly. I think that's just where it's at. You choose, your, you choose yourself first and what works best for you, mm -hmm. um, however that looks. Yeah, absolutely. You can't be sure how other people are, uh, are looking at it because, like I've said plenty of times, like you got to live with yourself. You got to wake up and look at yourself in the morning and uh, be able to sleep easily knowing that you made the right choices for yourself. Right. So I just, you know, prayers out. To, I just really hope the church does what the church is supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? It won't. <laughs> Trevor, you have to be a little optimistic on the church now. It won't. It won't. The ch Listen, the church is a, is a business. And a business is run by people. And <laughs> You know what's so funny? People aren't perfect. When you say church is a business, Kim gives me the news. Uh-huh. You know what happened? And then like maybe like five minutes later, she's like, I did not know Carl was worth $2.5 million. And I'm like, it's a goddamn business. It's a business. And it's a business. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. God is a business. 
it's a wild thing to to really like think about and fathom. God is not a business. People have made God into a business. 